So the first question is, what type of home ownership do you have? Do you own your home or do you rent your home? We own. Own. Uh, is it a single family detached home? Yes, it is. Do y'all know when you moved in? 1989. Well, I actually was, was <laughs> born and raised in this house. 1953. What does that count for? Yes, yeah, sure. But he left many years and then we came back in 1989 as a married with family. Well, I left when I went to college. So you lived here from when you were born until you went to college? That's right. From 1953 to 1971. And then you left. And then you came back married. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we went to Sylvester when we got married. We got we went to Sylvester to work in a bank there. And then we got married in, in May of 76 and I started Seven. 77. <laughs> I started working at the bank in, in October the 1st of 76. So there was a brief time. There but we brief. came back and moved in this house in 89. So... <clears throat> Mr. Lonnie, you ended up here because you were born. That's right. In Chris County and in this community. That's so right. So is that what brought you back to Chris County then when you got married? Oh, yeah, farming, yeah, brought me back here. Yeah. His dad was sick, and his dad and his twin brother were farming, and when his dad got sick with cancer, he came back to the farm to help with the farm. So you came, you're not from Cordial, right? No. So you came back because you were married. That's right, with children. <laughs> that was. And then y'all just, y'all stayed here since you moved here, right? Yes, you we came actually here? came back and lived on another house on the farm. So we came back in 1980. 86. Five, you started farming in 86. So that's... 86 when I started farming. Mm -hmm, but we moved back. Was pregnant was that? We moved back in '85. Before school started. Right. <clears throat> but we didn't move here till '89. So, but y'all been back in Cordial since '89. Right. Okay. So our next question is: <coughs> Tell us about y'all's house and what you live in, the kind of house you live in. Hmm. But this house has a very interesting history. Lonnie shared some that he grew up here. Part of our home was built in 1870, the oldest part of our home. Uh, of course, we've done a complete remodel since then, and it's always a work in progress. Uh, we added on a kitchen, two bedrooms, bath, and laundry in 1989. And then we had three boys. They were in teenage years, and we enclosed this garage in 98. So always a work in progress, but it's... Uh, <laughs> Been in Lonnie's family for a long time. Yeah, it has actually. My dad and mother, when they got married, uh, they moved in this house. It belonged to my uncle, which was like a farm. He owned all this farmland. Dad was like a farm overseer, kind of managed the farm labor and helped him. And uh, when him, after the war, World War II, Dad came back and actually married mother and then his uncle which is russell had all the land said bo he said charles thomas is his name said i want you and vera which is my mother to, to live here in this house on the farm look after my farm labor and equipment and all of that and help me and that's when we moved that's when he moved here in 1952 i think and then he after born a year later after they built, Lonnie's twin and his wife lived here, and they went on to build a, a home too. And the house didn't look anything like it does now, and they all wanted to go build a more modern house. But when I saw the house, I said, it's got potential. So I drew the plan on a napkin. And Lonnie's <laughs> uncle, who was a carpenter and a farm laborer, and, uh, we did the remodel. So, so yeah. when was the original house part built? That over there, 1870. 1870. So, it's, so that's, is that the kitchen and beyond? Not the kitchen. The kitchen was in the 89. So, the 89. kitchen was in the 89. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So it was really, how big was it when it was originally built then? It had a dog trot in the middle as you come in the front door, so that big wide hall that was mm -hmm. typical, and two rooms on either side. Mm -hmm. And then at one time, where our bedroom is, was a screened area, and the kitchen was separate. Lonnie can remember oh, some I of that. Yeah, there was So it's gone through a lot of transformation over the years. It's <laughs> cool. So it wasn't that big a house when it was just, when we, I was no. a kid, it just had that. Had one room for me and my brother, Ronnie stayed in, and then they had mom and dad's room right next door. And then a little, small little kitchen area, and which was, the kitchen area is where the soap is now, where we can sell soap mm -hmm. from. And then that room up front with all the formal dining is where mine and Ronnie's room was. And the dog trot hall and mom and dad's bedroom was in where the fireplace is over there. Mm -hmm. and another living room. So everything's changed. But, wow. But that yeah, part is original. Our bedroom was an open screened in porch, actually. And, and where our bathroom is was the kitchen way back. Yeah. So everything's changed. Yeah, you generally shift mm. through it. So does mm. y'all's house have any kind of solar? No, not any solar. Unless you open the, win open the windows or something. That, that's, <laughs> on a sunny day, you get a little sunny. <laughs> Uh, the yeah. only solar use we have here is running our electric fence that keeps our goats yeah. in that are used for our my soap business. That's the only solar use we have, so it's not actually in the house. <clears throat> so is that a decision that y'all have made not to put solar on your house, or is it just it well, y'all have a house? I, actually, or, or been in the house, so. you, you're really interested in this question back several years ago. I say several years ago. Maybe, maybe eight or nine. Eight or nine years ago, Sandra and I went to uh, Mother Earth News. It was uh, up in Asheville, North Carolina. A fair. Fair. And I sat in on a solar discussion, you know, about solar. And there was a lot of vendors there that had all these solar panels and all. And they were speaking and talking about getting off the grid and then getting, you know, the, the savings. And you can also... You know, if you have enough solar panels, you could actually feed back and sell some of your energy back to the power companies for your excess power that the solar generates. And uh, I got kind of interested in it, and I said, well, maybe, you know, we can put solar panels on the back of our house, on the roof, and, and maybe that'll generate enough that we can save on our electric bill, our heating and cooling. And I wanted to know a little bit about how much that would cost and then how much it would, solars it would take to generate a, a kilowatt hour of energy. And I had to find out what our kilowatt usage was, you know, during the peak months of the summer. I can't remember what they are. I had to go back and take an average for like five years and, and to receive. And I, anyway, whatever they were, I called, uh, I called Steve Winfrow, which Steve and I graduated. Caught a high school together. He's and he's a Chris kind of power power guy. I met him today. Yeah, and uh, he said, Lonnie, you know that it would take you know sort of what it costs to generate kil kilowatt hours. And he, he knew all about solar, obviously, and all. And he said because of the our part of the country we're in, I mean, in the part of South Georgia with the heat index and the and the humidity and the sun the way it raise it the way it's set up to, at certain peaks of the day uh, obviously it'll generate electricity but to, it, to generate enough to offset you would have to have I forgot how many panels I mean it was just a pile of panels to generate that kind of energy and uh, he led us to believe it was to, it, it was almost basically he said it was almost cost inefficient you know, for our area, our part of the state. And However, we were interested in it. We did check into it. Yeah. There'd still be an interest if it was cost effective. And then you can tell her about the couple we met in Florida. The gang got, uh, we, we even went to see somebody not too long after that. And yeah, we did some wire. research on it and uh, they were running their place off of solar and batteries and all of that. So we have done some research. Now, yeah, we did some. We went in and he had a double wide home. This guy, he was in Gainesville, Florida, a good friend of ours. 
And he gave us, I said, I wanted to find out more about it. So I went down to see him one, side, one day. And uh, he had a little utility room out back. He said, this is where I'll store all the batteries because they have to have batteries to store that energy. And uh, he had a room and he had all the equipment. I bet he had 50 batteries, 24 volt batteries all hooked up together that it would store all that energy. Uh, and then he would, it would run his air conditioner, his lights, hot water heater, and different kind of things. And he said, then we sat down and he showed me, a, he ordered all this equipment from a, it was a kit type thing. He ordered from somewhere in California. And he said it cost him $30,000 to order that kit. But it was a double wide home. That was, it wasn't a big home like we got. And I said, well, if he had to pay $30,000 for a double wide home, what would it take? I would have to spend buy a kit from California to, Solarize our home, so I have decided I don't think so. <laughs> that's so where we are at this point. <laughs> that's where we. So are. how how long ago was that? Still in that same eight to nine years? Yeah, ago? probably. Yes, it was about that same time frame we were looking into. Yeah, about. It was a, because our bills are high here because of it being an older home yeah. and that side probably not insulated as well as it should be. What what we came what I really came away with and we haven't done it because of the cost too is to insulate well to put more insulation mm -hmm. in the attic and the walls uh, that's the first thing, even when people were talking at that conference they said well the first thing to do you can put all the solar you want but if you first thing you need to do before you even consider it is you know how well are your house insulated you know in terms of your attic and your wall and your under space. But then we came home and said, well, we'll just go get a price on doing that. So we talked to a, a company out of Albany that came. No, it wasn't. I take that back. It was a Barnes heating and foam. He, Barnes, Barnes spray foam. It's, they don't mm -hmm. live, he don't live here anymore. But anyway, they came in and looked his brother, Donald, and they went under the house, went in the attic, went to all the different rooms added on to it all. He said, well, you want me to give you a price on the spray foam insulation? That would, I guarantee you that will reduce your bill by 50% or higher, by maybe 60%. I said, sure. And we got it back. And how much was it? I think it was 13000 13000 And that is something we still need to do, particularly on the older part of the house. But then I got but that's a, off the solar. Yeah. And that's it's, like, still it's energy related, yeah. but not... Huh. Well, I just heard something on the news recently about that I foam insulation. Spray foam and putting extra insulation. <laughs> that spray foam insulation, they said you better check with your homeowner's insurance because the problem with it, even though it's very efficient, the problem is uh, termites. Really? You, can't get in? you can't find termites because termites eat wood. And spray foam insulation is just like a styrofoam cooler. When you take the sheetrock out or look under the house, you can't see any wood. So you don't know if termites, if they got in somewhere, you wouldn't, be able you to wouldn't see the them. The problem until your house was falling down. Yeah, it's all falling down. You know, well, I got insulation, but the, somehow the termites got in too. So it cracked somewhere and they eaten eating all the wood. That could be a bigger problem. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, that's what we, that's kind of our knowledge of soul. If every question is like this, we may be. We may be too <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Can I ask you a more question? Um, yeah. But my other question was when you talked to the power company, is he still in the same position that he was when you talked to him, or did he have a role in that? I'm sure he probably would be. He would mean, be in the same I, Yeah, he, he probably would have. Okay. Uh, we talked for a little while about I just it. didn't wonder if, I was wondering if he was somewhere else. Or no, it's the same. No, it's the same. Yeah, he would, he would have had the same position here. You know, with the solar, I, I've learned from you know we're going taking that. Most people that are into that are in parts of the country where they don't have the unbearable heat. Well, they, I, well, they, well, I take that back. They do have it. Some places in Arizona, other places up in Colorado, all those places where it's cooler climate, mm -hmm. and they get kind of both. It seems to work well. But well, maybe we will learn something. Yeah. Hmm. 
but we're, but I'm I'm welcome to hear anything you can you can find out and share it. Somebody that can t tell me all the things I missed that I was told was wrong. <laughs> I can put it up and, and I can sell my power, sell power back to the power. power. I'll sell, sell it back. back. To power. I might, we might have to get something to put on. Yeah, I'll sell it back. If I can sell it back to the. What would, my question what would it cost to put solar on my house? Yeah, what would it, well, we can find out. It's part of what this is helping find out. That's right. Okay. Do you want a magazine to write on? Do you think you can do it? Okay, you got when something. You talk to Chris County Power Commission. You got to realize you're talking to a power source that doesn't want to. I know. I talked to, to one. When I, I was talking to one as I pulled up here. It's one that I was. <laughs> he probably told you it wouldn't be feasible. Right <laughs> depends. Yeah, it may depend. It so may depend. the map you have in front of you is of the United States, and I want you to color circle right however you would like to identify where you think the most solar is used across the U.S. Do you want a circle or what? Just a... You can color it, circle, write it, just as long as we know what you're identifying. Hmm, that's a really good question to think about. And you have to know your U.S. geography. <laughs> Yeah, I know the We're geography solar. well, but I don't really know where solar is used. But I would imagine you just have to guess, I suppose, if you don't know. So you're circling an area or circling states. Mm -hmm. Where was that guy from that taught that class? His name was Dan. Do you Probably know? Colorado, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, I'd say upper, uh, what do you call it, upper Midwest or whatever. I don't know. I'm just going to make a guess. Because I certainly do not know. Maybe I'll see right in here. But I really don't know. I'm just going to make a big circle in this area. So, hold it for a second. Okay. Why would you think that the Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, I'm having to left my geography real to tell too. Colorado, New Mexico, no, that's Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. New Mexico, Arizona. Why would those areas have more solar, you would think? I thought that because they certainly have sun. It's south, so they have sun. Uh, some of these areas have as much humidity as we do, but not not all of them. So. And it's probably cooler at night, so they can store that energy a lot longer. Than we do. Yeah. Then yeah. what'd you circle? Same area, probably. Colorado. No, that's more. Uh, you like do Arkansas. You, you, you off a little bit then? <laughs> probably not Midwest. You in? Where did you go? Indiana, Illinois. You're Midwest then. Huh? Where's yeah. The, where's Colorado? Out here? Colorado's your yeah. square right here. I probably need to make it a little bit bigger. No, Colorado's that one. Just make it a little bit bigger, sir. <laughs> and what you meant in the circle is not what you did. Huh? <laughs> so, why do you think those areas? I just like I said, I think it's uh, it's not as hot there. Well, and you had a good point, too. It's cooler at night. It's cooler at night, so they don't utilize to use it, and they can. The storage. Yeah, it still can be 90 degrees here mm -hmm. at night. Mm -hmm. In the summer, it sure can. You have Are you going to tell us the correct answer? For it after we get the study back, yeah. Okay. Well, the correct answer, well, what I've looked up on where more solar is used across the U.S., California is one of your biggest ones. That makes sense. Um, I know they use wind. I thought Arizona, wind. Arizona, California. When we were in San Francisco, the amount that you can look up and all you see on roofs is solar. Mm. A lot. And it's just more, they have more access. So, yes. like, they have they have more access to it. And so, that just... Well, that's where all the companies are to make those mm -hmm. solar equipment. And then, oh, nice. Florida is another big place. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. well, Although, my cousin is married to someone who sold solar equipment. Huh. Out of Ooh. Atlanta. So, I know. Now you get to look at Georgia. Okay. And where do you think Georgia has more solar pack solar usage? Oh, Georgia has more solar. Mm. I don't know. I wouldn't say like Just North Georgia. Just guess. I'd say North Georgia. 
Just kids. <laughs> but I don't know. Put your best guess in there. Uh, so, I'm gonna say. You gotta really know your county shapes for this one. Mm. There's only a few counties you have to learn. I'd say it's gonna be mid mid central Macon or Columbus. I said urban, uh, Atlanta, urban, areas. urban area because they the urban areas? more access, more resources, greater disposable income. And then, Mr. Lonnie, you said Columbus making more yeah. central. Why do you think that? Well, it's, it's more rural, and probably there may be a sense of, of having the same situation, a little bit more. Cooler climate at night, no. But yet during the day they got the sunshine and they got the open spaces and they they can find more applications and use it on the farms and that kind of stuff. I don't know how much cooler they are in Macon than here, but you have Columbus. Columbus, you got all the bases over there, and you got the, a lot of people over there, and they may have some more this high technology graduates, Georgia Tech graduates, all these high tech people that looks into all this kind of solar. Hmm. Do you know where it's mostly used in Georgia? Georgia's actually one of your higher, one, it's in there in the higher adopting of solar, the entire state. So it's actually interesting. It yeah, is. What part of the state? That I don't exactly know. Hmm. But I know it's kind of spread out throughout. Georgia's a big one, Florida's a big one, and then your West Coast is... They used to have, uh, they used to have, and it's not as attractive as it used to be, there used to be a lot of tax credits and a lot of different things, mm -hmm. federal government and state governments, mm -hmm. that would help. I don't know how much, I know there's tax credits on your own energy efficiency. Yeah. I don't know how much it, it phased out somewhat, <coughs> according to my cousin's I think it husband. Is. So do y'all know anybody across Georgia or anywhere in the U.S. that has solar? Yes, we, our acquaintances in Florida. Yep, they didn't gain from Florida. Other than that, do y'all know anyone? Well, we met people at mm -hmm. the uh, Mother Earth News Fair. We met people mm -hmm. that had it. But as far as really knowing others, no, I wouldn't say that we do. Yeah. Was you got some sister? people up there in Portland, or some of those really. I just gave you another person. <laughs> <laughs> First, does it still sell? No. Do you know if Anthony still sells the solar? I, I'm assuming he does. I haven't heard. Uh, who's that? Anthony. Anthony. Susan's husband. I don't know if he still does that now or not. I haven't heard that he's changed. Hmm. I'm not sure. So does he sell like panels and stuff? I'm not sure about that either. <laughs> he was just talking uh, about the election and how whoever went in um, was probably what might affect his job uh, as far as whether or not they were going to get credit mm -hmm. for energy, solar energy, whatever. There are some things like the solar, you know, more like solar energy for to run your your water, you know, your hot mm -hmm. water. Be mm -hmm. solar. There's some you can get small solar units to just do like a water heater. Mm -hmm. Well, things. we like it for running the fence. It works well for that. Yeah, and uh, but for your home, I mean, for the you know to replace the kind of uh, I guess voltage and BTUs that you need to heat to a house this big, you know, solar. You know, it would take a lot of panels and a lot of equipment, I think, to be comparable to. Be comfortable in. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's what we've been led that's to believe. That's what I've been led to believe anyway. Hmm. Maybe not. That may not be true. That's why I'm interested to, to see how that. And then I think you have to go back and say, well, because we're on Chris County Power, we're not on Georgia Power. 10% of our power usage is a, we get a discount on that because of the water generated by the hydro plant in Warwick. Mm -hmm. So they don't, we don't pay the same kilowatt. You know, cost that someone on Georgia Power. Still, it would be nice to reduce ours because. Mm. Well, and you, because if it works the same way, 
most EMCs, you own a part of it compared to your municipal slavery owner. Right. Hmm. Yeah, they deserve to. So is there anything else you want to add? Just that we are interested in it. Oh, yeah. And interested in the feasibility of it.